It's time for a former UK's Lee Anderson MP. Five illegal migrants, including one young child, tragically died while crossing the channel yesterday in a shockingly overcrowded dinghy the French authorities had waved off from the beach with no real resistance whatsoever. This comes just hours after the Safety of Rwanda bill, designed to stop the small boats, was finally passed in Parliament. And then, in an apparent contradiction of the Prime Minister's position, David Cameron has today come out with this. What I would say is we have to make sure we deal with illegal immigration. That comes first. I don't think it's necessary to leave the ECHR. I don't think that is, needs to happen to make this policy work. But I know what matters the most is being able to say to the British public, we've got a fair immigration system, we've got a strong immigration system, and we're not putting up with illegal migration. It must be for Britain to say who can come and who can't come, rather than anybody else. Well, meanwhile, Starmer seems sure the Rwanda plan won't work at all. The government has lost control of the borders. But this Rwanda gimmick is not the way to stop it. It cost an absolute fortune, £300 million already, another £50 million either this week or next, to remove a few hundred people. That's a drop in the ocean. OK, well, Lee, welcome to the show. Now, is David Cameron right that leaving the ECHR wouldn't help solve the small boats crisis? He also really kind of blamed our migrant crisis on Brexit, didn't he? I don't think that's really... Uh, he shouldn't be saying that, to be honest with you, Patrick. Actually, you know, the fault of this problem we've got at the moment, the migrant crisis, is that we've got a weak government that's not prepared to do the right thing. And the right thing is, is turnbacks in the English Channel. We know that works. Other countries have done it. It's succeeded in the past. And to be really brave, when these illegal migrants, let's get it right, Patrick, they are illegal migrants, they're not genuine asylum seekers, once they get to this country, stick them on a boat and send them straight back to France. It needs political will, it needs a courageous government to do this, and we can do but it. But is he right, then, though, that we don't need to leave the ECHR? I don't think we do. I mean, I, I would sooner leave the ECHR. Just ignore it. Take these people back. These people are breaking into our country. And we've seen the awful news yesterday, Patrick, mm. five people dying... People rushing these these dinghies on the French beaches, jumping on and creating mayhem. People, you know, being thrown into the sea. Little children dying. It's disgusting. And actually, Parliament, where I work, has got blood on its hands. This should be stopped. What have you made of David Cameron? You know, when you were with the Tories. And... He's a. Um, to, to be fair, I mean, he's unelected. I, I mean, me and several colleagues, and, and probably most of Ashfield, weren't very happy that a bloke just turns up and gets a lordship and be becomes foreign secretary. Every other MP in that place, you know, regardless of what party you're in, Patrick, has had to fight to be elected, had to fight for votes, had to campaign, had to knock on doors. He rocks up, is, you know, is given a place in the House of Lords, become foreign secretary, not accountable. We can't question him. In, in the House of Commons, we have to do it through mm. other ministers. Uh, but I mean, he, was, he was blaming Brexit a bit as well, I think. Because well, he, was say, he was saying that, you know, when we were in the European Union, we could have had this returns agreement with France and now we don't, don't have it. Well, what do you make of that? Well, if he's blaming Brexit, then he needs to have a look at himself in the mirror because it was him, he needs to remind it, it was him that gave us the referendum that ultimately left for, for us to, uh, to leave the European Union. So if he's going to blame anybody, Blame himself, but I don't. I don't swallow that uh, at, at all. Again, Patrick, I go back. You know, it's political will. You know, if, if we'd had some of the leaders in charge of this country like we've had in the past, like a Churchill or, or, or a Maggie in charge, this nonsense would not be happening. Okay. Uh, all right. Now I'm just going to shift it on a bit because I saw, saw this story this morning. And I thought you'd be quite good to get your take on this. So <laughs> Richie Sunak is urging big businesses to employ prison leavers to solve Britain's labour shortage, with free courses on a range of skills, including <laughs> forklift truck driving, gardening and furniture painting. Now, look, Lee, is this a clever solution to rehabilitation or actually, frankly, a disaster waiting to happen? Well, I've always said that... I, I always believe in giving people second chances, Patrick. I think there's a lot of people in prison that need a second chance. Obviously, some that you can give them two, three, four chances and they will, will recommit offences. But we have in this country probably about 90,000 people in prison at the moment... And I know for a fact we all know that we've got probably 80-odd thousand vacancies in, you know, picking fruit, picking vegetables, in, mm. in the agricultural sector. That, for me, has always been a simple solution. I've said it in the past. But, look, we have prisoners coming out of prison now. They've got nowhere to live. They've got no job. They've got no skills. The chances of them are uh, re-offending are pretty high. I say give them a chance, mm. learn them a trade, 
get them that get them into that habit of getting up in the morning, going to work, and being respectful, and learning those life skills and those work skills they need to get back into the employment market. Give them a chance. Yeah, I, look, I'm all for that. I am all for that. My concern would be a situation where a hard-working school leaver who's done nothing wrong in their life <laughs> finds themselves in a situation where. They're being bumped down a queue because someone who's just left prison, you know, a prolific shoplifter or whatever, is yeah. being trained to drive a forklift truck for free yeah. instead of them. We can't have that, can we? No, I understand that argument, Patrick. But then again, you know, to keep a prisoner in prison is probably a thousand, two thousand pound a week to keep yeah. these people in prison. It's much cheaper. Uh, and it is, it's, it's better for the country if we can get these people. Who's, some of them's had a bad start in life. We know that. I've worked with some of these people in the past. Give them a chance. Give them a chance to work and contribute towards our society. If they can't, if they're going to be complete nuisances and reoffend, then get them back inside and lock them up. As far as I'm concerned. Mm, all right. Now, um, you marked St George's Day yesterday in your own unique style. Just a little uh, reminder to people. <laughs> I, I'm I'm going to be um, getting stuck right in actually to what I thought was. Absolutely disgraceful scenes uh, yesterday. Really disgraceful scenes from our police, who, although they might deny this, I thought, seemed incredibly ready to want to really, really go on the offensive against just patriotic English men and women. But, uh, Lee, like I was saying, you, you had your own unique style when you were marking St George's Day. Should you have a little look? Go on. Good easy, look. Flag of St George. It's St George's Day today, and this country of ours has been a gift to the world, look at the Industrial Revolution, culture, arts, music, sports, everywhere you look on this planet, you see some of that. So, not everyone was feeling as patriotic as you, it's fair to say. Like, <laughs> one, one Twitter user said, here we go, classic. What was this? St George was born in Cappadocia, Turkey, the 27th biggest producer of avocados. He's also the patron <laughs> saint of Catalonia, which celebrates La Diara de San Jordi today and of other nations. If he arrived in the UK shores, this is the classic line, if he arrived in the UK shores, right-wingers like you would deport him to Rwanda. Uh, well, I mean, look, it'd take a bit more than that to dampen your patriotism. What do you make of these people who are so ready to just... Um, well, you're an eight on your chips, Lee. Well, I mean, these people... I mean, it's completely wrong whether this person is about being deported to Rwanda. They'd probably get put him... St George would probably get put him in a four-star hotel. He'd probably put a dodgy asylum claim in, uh, go to the local church and, and claim he's, he's a Christian, get baptised, and then uh, do whatever he wants to do. But this is nonsense. You know, what, whenever I put something on social media, Patrick, that is seen as patriotic, you get these lunatics, these nutters coming out, just dissing our country. And if, they, quite frankly, I've always said it, if you're not happy with our history, our heritage, our culture, our way of life, and things like St George's Day, then clear off and go and live in another country. What did you make of some of the police respond? We're going to talk about this a little bit later on. It's been a big issue, yeah. this. What did you make of some of the police response? Well, it's funny you should say that, Patrick, because where my office is in, 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 in Parliament, it's literally 50 yards away from, from Downing Street, and I've been there for the past four years. I've seen the BLM riots, mm -hmm. which was scary. I've seen the, uh, the pro-Palestinian marches, the Hamas supporters up and down Whitehall on an almost weekly basis. And yesterday, I saw the St George rally there, and it's the first time I've ever s seen the police get stuck in. Um, all the other times when we've had some really scary scenes, when, as MPs, we've been scared to go out, they've done nothing. I wasn't scared to go out yesterday. It was just 150 lads with uh, St George's costume. A bit, a bit boisterous lad, but they weren't causing trouble, from what I could see. Mm.